today I'm going to unbox Space Core Ventures, which is an expansion for Space Core 2025 to 2300 AD, which is a game designed by John Butterfield and published by GMT Games. Now this game is about space exploration and it's based on a book by the same name, Space Core. Uh, the book is okay. It's not your typical sci-fi space opera. It's more of a technical manual of, of how to get into space or how to move into space with uh, some characters thrown in. Um, not a bad book, uh, but you know, be careful what you're, you know, getting into because it's not uh, it's not your high thrills um, space venture, uh, which is the name of the expansion. Uh, now, uh, John Butterfield is known for his war game designs and more specifically known for his solitaire designs or solitaire friendly designs. He designs games that are multiplayer, that have a solitaire uh, element, or games that are really solitaire that have sometimes have a multiplayer element, or designs games, <clears throat> excuse me, that are you know, only played solitaire. So uh, this game fits into that middle category. It's basically it's a multiplayer game that has a solitaire uh, element and a, and a good one. Uh, it basically uses cards that from uh, eras that you're not playing in as the AI engine. Now, what do I mean that errors that you're not playing in? Another unique aspect of this game is there's, there's you can play in three different er eras. You, you, the first era or the first part of the game, which you can play you know, by itself, you can play any one of the three by themselves or you can play them all in order. Or you can maybe start with the second and, and play the second and third or play the first, second, and what you know, has many different uh, you know, kind of options of how you want to play the game. But each era, you go further, further into space. The first one, you're basically going into just the near solar system, going to the moon and Mars. And then the second one, you're kind of going through the rest of the solar system. And then the third one, you're going out into the galaxies. You know, you're trying to find new uh, planets and galaxies, and you're going much, much further out into space. And it all uses the same concepts where you're, you have these cards that you're kind of buying from a main, main market, a buying or drafting kind of component where you're um, acquiring from the, the, the main market and then you're adding them to your, your, you're playing them from your hand or you're also adding them to your infrastructure of your corporation. And your corporation, <clears throat> you know, has different elements like research, which lets you get you more cards, move, which is one of the most important aspects because it lets you move into space, um, production, which, you know, helps you if you've got... Uh, factories or, or other uh, production type uh, elements out there on bases that you allows you to you know, collect from that. Uh, there's all different types of aspects of, of how you're developing your uh, corporation, your space uh, exploration corporation um, over time. And But everybody plays from basically the same type of board. The only thing that separates you is the different kind of cards that you collect over time and use is what really separates you. Now, what Space Core Ventures brings to the mix is it brings unique corporations. So there's, uh, I think, 14 in this box, and they play differently, and they have different abilities, and so you get a little bit of, of asymmetrical advantage in this game because it's going to be playing differently. Also, it keeps up with the solitaire play, and that I think out of those 14, I think 10 of them have flip sides that you can play solitaire, so it is keeping with uh, its uh, solitaire friendly roots uh, in, in this game play as well. Plus, I think there's some new cards that go in there as well. So let's take a look inside the box and see what all we get. Again, it's mainly going to be these new corporations. Getting in here. So nice, sturdy GMT box, very sturdy actually. And so you're going to get your solo rule book. So this is basically what you need to know about the the additions to the solo game. Not a whole lot there. I mean, we're talking eight pages. So there's your solo rule book. Then you have your multiplayer rule book, which really is uh, it's kind of on heavier stock. And it's really more of a fold out. It's four pages. So not a lot of new rules to the game. I kind of like that. But because mainly you're just adding the new board. And so there's some new setup and the like there. 
Um, here's some uh, competition action. So this is a player aid that I think is based on either the new rules or the, the new board maybe. So you got a two-sided player aid there. And then you get the boards themselves. We'll look at them in a second here. And then you get some new cards. Oh, and you get a new, uh, these are usually uh, contracts. There's so many, that's, that's kind of the timing mechanism that completing a certain number of contracts lets you move on to the next uh, phase. And so I believe that might be for the, for the contracts. So you got some new cards here. Here's a contract here that are added to the game. Uh, I don't know if there's any errata or if they're just all new cards or if there's any kind of replacement of stuff. I need to kind of dive into that a little bit more. But the main thing we want to see here are these new boards. So here are the new uh, boards. This one's called Ahead of the Curve. And, it, and, and you can see here it plays two to four players. So it's going to tell you how many people... Uh, can play or what these boards are for for this is for a two to four player game and this is labeled number one and then here's the head of the curd one player so um two to four on this side and then if you want to play solitaire you use this side so nice uh, good sturdy board here as i said before everybody had kind of the same generic board that they played with this one has uh different uh things to it as you can see here comparing with number two you know this you start off with a move and a build and and really no other slot over here here you've got three infra infrastructure slots and you start off with a one move everybody always has a two research or i imagine that's probably everybody has that because that's the that's the way you get new cards you have to reach so you you can't um and usually you can't you can't build over your research because you have to have something way to get new cards, otherwise you're kind of dead in the water. So it's kind of protecting you from yourself in that regard. So um looks like there's some different uh, abilities there too, depending on the eras. Like this, these are rules for all eras, and then planetaries and starfarers, and then starfarers. Those are your, th you know, your three, uh, three eras there. So it looks like you start with some different card set up too. So anyway, so that's ahead of the curve. Here's uh, Space Corp. And uh, so this is two to four players. And then on the back is Allied Transit. You can play as a one player. Oh, I'm just flipping them like this. Here's Allied Transit two to four player. And Polaris GCI one player. Here's the Polaris uh, CGI two to four players. Discovery Pr Discover Prime. So as you can see, there's some there's some different there's some differences based on you know what their infrastructure looks like, maybe some of the cards up here, and then some of the uh, era specific changes down below. So I'll just go through these kind of quick here. But the nice thing is you have, um, you know, they both have the, the multiplayer aspect and then they have it changed for uh, si solo player, which um, in this one here, this one's only three to four players. So not supposed to use this one in a two player game. So there are some changes there or some suggestions or guidelines. Here's three to four players again grab tech stellar security and then you here is a this is i think a new board so maybe this is for solitaire play maybe yeah for for use of solitaire only so this is the three to four player if you're playing stellar security but if you're not playing in a solo you get a board here that allows you to uh that that's going to be a good different setup or competition for solitaire play. That might be that new player aid that's in there as well. And this is for solo game only as well. Oh, so this is a different. This is for these different boards uh, and who you recommend who who you play against. That's interesting. Kind of read into that a little bit more. Okay. 
So there you go. So you got four of these uh, for solo only that are, uh, huh. So uh, this is the competitors that you're going up against for solo. So I guess this is the AI. So these are the four different AIs. I think that can, I guess that can be used uh, for, um, for solitaire play. Maybe that's how, maybe that's how it's working. That's who your competition is. Hence the name there. Maybe that's how it works. So that's what you get in a box of of Space Ventures. Uh, it, this is kind of a, if you like Space Core, like how it plays, then um, to me this is a no brainer. I mean, you just you just get this because it's more content. It falls in the category of an expansion that just gives you more goodness. It gives you more content, some new ways to play. Um, you know, some more corporations to uh, try out or, you know, actually gives you some corporations, some unique play to try out. So if you like Space Core, uh, again, I think this is probably an uh, uh, auto, auto buy. Uh, if you don't like Space Core, I don't think this is going to add anything new to make you like the game. Unless, of course, if you didn't like Space Force because Space Core because you thought everybody started out with the same kind of generic position and you really like asymmetrical play or unique player powers, well, then maybe this is something to try out, right? If that's if that's what you didn't like about Space Core. But I don't, I find that kind of hard that that might be the only thing you didn't like about Space Core. But if, if you don't like how it plays, you don't like, you know, the um, that the gameplay is kind of more Euro-based mechanics with cards uh, and drafting and, and the like, um, not really drafting, but, but acquiring, then... Um, you know, this doesn't change that. This is, again, more of the same and just adds unique player powers is primarily here. There's really three big space exploration games on the market right now. There's the original, or the, the not the original, but the one that came out the, the longest, or been out the longest, is uh, Final Frontier. Then there is uh, Stellar Horizons that came out um, a little over a year ago. And then you have uh, Space Corps. Uh, the way I kind of rank these, uh, uh, Final uh, Frontier is, uh, or High Frontier, it's called High Frontier. I made a mistake there. High Frontier is designed by literally a rocket scientist, and so it feels like that. It is very mathy, it's very crunchy, it's very detailed. If you really want to get into more of a simulation of space exploration, then that's probably what you want to do. Uh, that's the game you probably want to go to. I don't want to go that far <laughs> into into space exploration. I'm interested in it, but I don't want to you know, have to have a calculator to play my game. Um, but but that that's that's design out there, and it's just been I think re-released and has or updated and has a whole bunch of different modules to it. So something you might want to look into on that. But that is the heaviest of of the these three uh, primary ones that are out there. Uh, the next one, Stellar Horizons. Stellar Horizons is probably the biggest bang for your buck. I mean, it's an expensive game. It's a big game, but there you get a lot in that box. And that one is a very, it takes up a lot of table space too. But that one is kind of a uh, in between these two. It's not as heavy or crunchy as uh, High Frontier, uh, but it's not as easy and playable as Space Core. So uh, it has more, it, again, it probably tends more to the simulation aspect of the gameplay and as to the playability so you know there's always usually a trade-off between playability and simulation factor when you're talking about games and i find uh high frontier to be way on the simulation side and and maybe not as playable as these other two i find cell horizons kind of in the middle there it's a good balance uh but it's still more of a simulation than space core so it's a little bit you know, there's a lot more Chrome and a lot more things to uh, think about and remember and kind of go through. Uh, it also has a solo system as well that is um, that uh, is playable. But again, you know, it, it's so big that it kind of uh, crushes on its own mass, right? Because, I mean, if, to play that game solo, I mean, it's a huge setup. It's a lot of stuff. And solo players don't typically don't like to, you know, take up a whole table or two whole tables to play one game. Um, they want to get something they can kind of get down, get at, uh, uh, play, and then clean up uh, afterwards. At least that's the way I am. I don't know if I want to speak for all solo players, but but Stellar Horizons is such a big uh, thing. It's kind of it's kind of unwieldy when it comes to solo play, in my opinion. Um, 
but if you want more simulation and <clears throat> and but still have some you know have some good gameplay and have a lot of stuff to do then still horizon might be your bag for me i i, I live with space core because uh, I think it accomplishes all the, it accomplished much of what the other two accomplish, at least from a thematic standpoint and from an overall view, but yet is, is I think much more playable. Uh, the, uh, and I play a lot of Euro games, so, you know, the, those mechanics are kind of intuitive for me at least, because I played a lot of games that use some of those similar mechanics, so, uh, I can kind of get right into it. So, um, that's kind of what I, if, if you want, if you're looking for, for playability, um, I think, you know, Space Corps is probably the highest on the playability scale and probably lowest or lower than the other two on simulation. But it still delivers the simulation punch. It still delivers the theme of what you're trying to do uh, here with, with an exploration game. Um, still, Horizons is kind of in the middle, but is is might be the biggest of, of the three. And then... Um, High Frontier is, is I think, way over on the, again, these are my opinion, but I think it's way over on the edge as far as it's mostly a simulation, um, and I, I find it find it relatively hard to play at times, at least compared to Sail Horizons or to Space Core, which I find the easiest to play. Those are my thoughts. Uh, I thought I'd share those with you as I was looking at this new expansion, because I'm excited to get this new expansion to the table. Uh, I've played Space Core mostly solo, I like to get more multiplayer games. I think with these new uh, corporation or player powers, it might, might be I might be able to entice more people to kind of get into this because of uh, they have some unique aspects to it. And it doesn't look like it's a large learning cur curve to get into the multiplayer. It's not like you have to. It's not like um, uh, Rude or Coin where you have to learn a whole new player power. These are relative, I think, uh, basic or simple to get into. Uh, there's just if you know how to play the game, you're gonna know what, how, what the differences are just by looking at the player board. Uh, anyway, uh, hope this was helpful. Thanks. <laughs>